Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In our last episode of Understanding Compression, we looked at the basics of compressors. We looked at some of the common controls that are available on many compressors to help you get started. Today we'll look at compressors a little bit further and discuss side chaining. Typically when you place a compressor on a track, you intend for the compressor to respond to the contents of that track. With side chaining, a compressor responds to a signal other than what's on the track. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a collaboration between myself and Dom McSweeney. Check the link above to see how Dom uses JS plugins to create his guitar tones. I recently recorded drums and bass to go along with the guitar tracks that he sent me. Let's take a listen. One of the most common uses of sidechain compression is to get one track to turn down based on the output of another track. You may also hear sidechain compression referred to as ducking. Ducking. What's meant by ducking is the volume of one track will duck in favor of another. For example, you might use sidechain compression to have your bass duck in favor of the kick. While some might argue that it's best to EQ your bass and your kick drum differently, sidechain compression can also help to make that kick drum a bit more audible. To demonstrate how this works, let's record a little bit of audio. I'll go to the end of the project and create a new track. We'll just call it Talkback. I've got this armed on the same mic that I'm speaking on now. Check, check, check. We can see that we've got signal on this. Let's record a little bit. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression, and I never know what to say when speaking freely like this, so I probably should just stop right about now while I've got something to work with. I'll save that, and let's take this item and move it back somewhere else in the music here. And just to make it a little bit easier for me to reach the tracks, I'm going to take this and move it up towards the front, right beside my mix bus track. I'll scroll back up in the project where we can see our item, and let's take a listen. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression, and I never know what to say when speaking. Needless to say, that does not go with the music, but let's see how we can use that vocal track to demonstrate sidechain compression. All of my music is currently feeding through track number two, which is listed as Mix Bus. Let's add Reacomp to this. By default, detector input on Reacomp is set to main input left and right, which means that it's going to respond to the content of that track. As we discussed in the previous video, a ratio of 1 to 1 will mean that the compressor does nothing, so we'll need to turn up this ratio if we want to see something happen on the track. We'll also need to decrease the threshold. Let's leave the attack and release where they are, and bring down the threshold until we get some movement on the gain reduction meter. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression, and I never know... Now you can see the gain reduction meter moving and we can hear that it's responding based on the content that's being fed into that mix bus. But what if we wanted the mix bus to turn down based on my talkback? I can route the audio from my talkback track into the mix bus track, but that would just end up adding that audio into the same track and playing back in double. But if we'd like for the compressor to respond to my talkback instead, we would need to change our detector input from main input left and right to auxiliary input left and right. Let's change our input and see what happens. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression and I... As you can see, nothing happened, but that's because we don't currently have our talkback routed properly into the track. We can accomplish this in a couple of different ways. We can click the routing button on track 2 and we can create a receive from track 1. We can click the routing button on track 1 and create a send to track 2. Let's try that for now. We can see now that track 1 is routed into track 2. However, we can see that the audio from track 1 is going into channels 1 and 2 of track 2. That might seem a little bit confusing, but let's see if we can break this down a bit. All of your tracks by default have two channels. Channels 1 and 2 are your primary left and right. Channels 3 and 4 is what makes up your auxiliary input. So if we go back and take a look at our route for track number 1, we can change this drop down to send the audio from channels 1 and 2 to channels 3 and 4 on track 2. Now if we close this, go back to Reacomp on track 2 and switch that to auxiliary input left and right, we should begin to see signal on the input meter on the left as my vocal track starts. I'll back it up a little bit so we can verify that. Hey it's Mike, let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode we'll be looking at sidechain compression and I never know what to say when speaking and as you can see, the gain reduction meter and the input meter responded based on the output of track number one. 
that's being fed into the compressor. This is commonly used in broadcast to have music automatically turned down when someone is speaking. As you could hear, the music was coming back to its normal volume a bit too fast. If we increase the release time, the music will stay turned down a bit longer. Let's see if we can fine tune this to get a good balance between the vocal and the music. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reverb. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression, and I never know what to say when speaking freely like this, so I probably should just stop right about now while I've got something to work with. That seemed to work out okay, but in my opinion, that method of getting the audio into the compressor's sidechain was a bit inefficient. Let's see if we can find another way. I'll get rid of the sends for now. Let's add a fresh copy of Reacomp back to our mix bus. Now with Reacomp Focus, I can grab my route button from track one and drop it directly onto Reacomp. You can see from the pop-up dialog that this has automatically created a send from channels one and two of track one to channels three and four of track two. Now all we need to do is change our detector input to auxiliary left and right, set our threshold and ratio, and try again. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about reverb. In today's episode, we'll be looking at sidechain compression, and I never know what to say when speaking freely like this, so I'll... There, that method's a whole lot faster. We get the same result, but it saves us a lot of clicks. You might find other use cases for sidechain compression. We won't go too deep into the topic for now, but this will hopefully get you on your way to using compression in your mixes. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee link below. I don't have any coffee, it's late. I like toy robots.